what's good YouTube and welcome to the house you might think this is just a youtuber blowing something out of proportion but I think it marks history for Yu-Gi-Oh we see Konami recognize the traditional list we have waited so long for this moment boys and it may be over for just Europe right now but I really hope that we see it because they're doing it at nationals of all places and it makes me really happy. Unfortunately, we didn't get a 1-1 scale of the figure. So yeah, usually they show like the little card next to the giant card to show you how big it's going to be. During the Sunday of the UK National WCQ, you will have the opportunity to participate in the Attack of the Giant Forbidden Card event. This event will be single elimination, 64 player tournament using the traditional format. The winner will get a giant card version of the Forbidden Card, Pot of Greed. This is beautiful. You actually don't know how beautiful this is. So it looks like this is taking place June 24th for them. And it's at their nationals, not their WCQ. I really hope Konami USA pays attention and does something for this. So if you're not aware what the traditional list is, basically nothing is off limits or forbidden causing some of the most degenerate gameplay that exists. They have uh, definitely a different list than the current list, but here's where generation duels failed if you're aware of what generation duels are they're basically a different format where you can play with different ban lists and different kinds of lists and it's it's it kind of crazy to have five different ban lists in one format traditional just does it right you can activate the most broken cards in the game painful choice oh yes baby please <sighs> They did it so right. So let me explain why this is a big deal first off. Forbidden cards are some of the most iconic cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. A giant card typically goes from anywhere to 350 it's, if it's absolute butt. It's an average of 500 for the decent cards. And sometimes the more iconic cards go for way higher. I believe there's like Ghost Ogres all went for $750 plus typically. A lot of the, the really good ones go for 800 Forbidden cards being the most iconic cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, these giant cards could easily go for a thousand plus dollars. Imagine a giant Chaos Emperor Dragon. Whew, that would easily, easily just demand a price of a thousand, especially if these are hollow foil. Konami, please do this right. Do not common print these. Please put some foil on these. But I've really got to give it to them. 20 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! And we finally see traditional format play. Another format recognized. Konami has been listening. They've, they've heard the demands for past formats. They've heard the want and desire for something besides the current format. And we have traditional play at a national event. I, I'm not being sarcastic. I am actually floored. I am excited for the potential and opportunity that this could bring to other YCSs, to our WCQ. I am begging you, please. I will come out and like I don't I don't care. I, I would actually play in this perhaps over the main event just for the experience. Like I I really would. I I really would want to win a Forbidden Giant card and actually start studying that format. I'm I'm highly impressed. Thank you, Konami Europe. You're ahead as always, it feels like. Your media has been amazing. This event is amazing. You released the FA cards to us early, hopefully later today. Uh, and actually, huge shout out to DZ. If he kind of did a call to action that got us there. I, I like posted it on my Facebook, and I think I only caused like 700 more votes. DZ floored that poll. So I'm pretty excited to see the new FA cards later today, too. That's another note, though. Let's go ahead and look at some brand new cards. I'll, I'll gush about traditional a bit more at the end of this video and kind of the memories from, from my past. But two more cards for Cyber Dragon and Dragoonity. I've only read the Cyber Dragon card, but it is nuts. Normal spell card, Cyber rev system so it does have cyber in the name making it searchable within the deck special summon one cyber dragon 
from your hand or graveyard. And if you do, it cannot be destroyed by card effects. This is actually how you do legacy support. This is how you make an old deck relevant. Now, I feel like maybe sometimes Konami doesn't want to make an old deck relevant with just one card because like it doesn't create them any direct sales unless they plan to reprint it somewhere. Now, this card and all the new Cyber Dragon support is going to start to help sell a entire set because people are going to be after this. I expect this to be a rarity bump. Uh, it's it, you know how Yugi Nono's yelling for a power bond searcher. This this did pretty well. So you don't have to have a graveyard resource. This can be an extender. You can special summon from your hand. It's n almost never dead in your hand because you don't need to simply have a graveyard resource. But this also goes really great with the Link Monster. Notice something that's missing from this card that's typically on a card like this. There's no once per turn clause at all. There's not an activate once per turn. There's no hard once per turn. There's nothing like that on this card. And it gives added protection that's permanent. It cannot be destroyed by card effects. It's not like just for this turn with the Phantom Knight cards. It's not like the first time it would happen. It cannot be destroyed by card effects, period. Spell, trap, monster. Oh, this is actually really big against True Draco if True Draco lasts till this card comes out, but... It's looking really exciting. All right, I haven't read Dragoonity Sonatus yet. It's a level four wind, wing beast, effect monster, attack 1800, defense 600. So I'm guessing some kind of Stratos if they give it an 1800 set. You can only use this card's name's first effect once per turn. So hard once per turn. Um, you can discard one Dragoonity card. So it's very specific to the archetype. Equip a Dragoonity tuner from your deck to this card. You also cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Dragon Monsters. Okay, that, that restriction is not the worst for Dragoonities. All, all, most of what you're going for is actually already Dragon. You're still able to make Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Eh. Having to pitch a Dragoonity card to get there, though kind of rough but you this is a essentially two card crystal wing not the worst i guess the wind witches kind of do that better for you if you're able to link up like if you were able to wind witch then do something to link up with uh your blade fly your buff blade fly wind monster uh link monster and then you're able to like get maybe double crystal wing synchro dragon one with immunity to certain destructions i could see it I, I could see it being okay. That's a lot of work, though. You're going to have to play some bricks in your deck to get there. And uh, it, at least it's the rest of this turn, not this turn, period. So, like, you're able to do things before you, you get going there. If a Dragoonity card or cards you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy one Dragoonity card equipped to this card instead. How often are you actually leaving this out to try to protect your other Dragoonities? Yeah, you brick pretty bad at that point. Yeah, you're not trying to ever use this effect. It's kind of a, kind of a giving a nod back to older protection effects. It doesn't really do what you want it to. It doesn't help you get through your play. See, this is a starter card that is meant to go into a Synchro Summon and not be left on the field so this effect is very unnecessary you're probably not trying to revive this and get an equip again in fact you can't even use its effect twice so like uh the first effect's decent it's a decent card for them it is a starter in a sense at a higher cost than you would like it to be you'd rather summon a wind witch crystal wing than a crystal wing through this it's not that great, I think at least. But I like that it's giving consistency to the deck a little bit, even at a greater cost. This, the Cyber Dragon Rev system, that's how you do some legacy support, boys. This is how you, you, know, you give that card that helps bust a deck open. Not only is it an extender from the hand without a graveyard resource, it's a free resource from the graveyard should you need it. This is just straight up the options, the power, the protection. That's just straight up how you do it for a deck.
and it's not even gonna like bring cyber cyber dragons to like tier zero oh my gosh meta but it did pretty good so what do you guys think of all of this i'm i'm really really excited for traditional format i just can't stress it enough i think konami you know hasn't heard death please on its ears we've been asking for this for so long and we now have it on a huge scale and we have really awesome legacy support in the cyber dragon card uh it's a good day and we'll see the fa's later we i think there's gonna be five of them this time as they've upped it to 12 tcg exclusives per set so it's, it's looking like five fa cards again later today thanks for watching everybody